two, check one, two, check. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Check one, two. There we go. Check, check, check. Camping is a spring thing, and Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune is here to get you started this spring. Whether it's RV accessories, parts, RV service, or RV sales, Pawpaw's Campers has you covered. Just call our toll-free line, 800-728-2267. That's 800-728-CAMP. Or go to our website at pawpawsniceprice.com. We're not that far from where you are. Come and see us today. Welcome to Brew Tide Baseball on WRJW, 1320 AM, 106.9 FM, and on the portal. And you can also catch us tonight 
on our YouTube channel. That is at PMHS Sports. We welcome you to Richie Tillman Field on the campus of Pascagoula High School, where Picky Memorial High School will get together tonight for the first district contest against the Pascagoula Panthers. So let me go ahead and give you the starting lineups tonight as we are getting ready to announce the players and start the um, festivities tonight. Parker Helton will be leading off. He's in center field. Kyler King will be at shortstop. He'll bat second. Morgan Kraft will be at first pace. And he will bat third. Uh, Mr. Moreau will be pitching, and he'll also be batting fourth tonight. And that's Cooper Moreau. And Landon Franklin will be the designated hitter. He'll be hitting for uh, Mason Bayless, who will be catching for the Tide. Braxton Carter will be playing third base. Um, Mr. Pugh, that is Turner, will be in right field batting seventh. Brunson Stockstill will be at second base, be batting eighth. And Justin Stockstill will be in left field for the Tide. So that's how they'll stack up tonight in the first district contest of the night. A cool evening here in Pascagoula. Sun is starting to set. It's actually a beautiful spring evening. Not much wind at all. It has been blowing just a little bit in from right field, but as I sit here tonight facing home plate just on the third base side of um, home plate, it's actually a beautiful evening right behind War Memorial Stadium uh, at the football campus here. I'm sure you Maroon Tide fans know that one well, but looking forward to a beautiful night of baseball, beautiful, crisp uh, spring evening, and I'll be doing solo again tonight. Timmy is playing dad in the uh, bleachers here uh, to my left, so uh, allowing him to be a father this year, and I am excited and happy to do it. So welcome again to Richie Tillman Field. Welcome to the Paul Paul's Campers and Cars pregame show. I'm going to take just a spot here as we continue to get going and uh, come back, and I'll give you a few stats so far for the Maroon Tide. Welcome to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Hey friends, camping's a spring thing, and spring is here. Check out this new 2024 Wildwood FSX 174BH. This travel trailer has a front queen bed, rear bunks, and only weighs 2,899 pounds. MSRP is 24,398, reduced to only 13,988. A brand new 2024 bunkhouse trailer for only 13,988. Off Lost Campers is not that far from where you are. Come and see us. Welcome back to Richie Tillman Field here on the campus of Pascagoula High School as we're getting ready to get underway here. In just a few moments, both the teams have taken their infield, and uh, we're just waiting on the umpires to get changed as the JV game ran just a little bit long earlier. Uh, Pascagoula edged that one out in the bottom of the fifth inning, 9-8. to eight. They were ahead. When I got here in the third inning, I think it was 8-2. to two. Pick you come roaring back and scored um, six runs in the fourth, but in the, I'm sorry, in the top of the fifth, and then Pasagula was able to plate one in the bottom of the fifth to take that over the junior varsity nine to eight. Let me give you a few stats here in the, the uh, early part of the season as we get ready to start district play tonight. Kyler King, he leads the Maroon Tide in batting. Actually, he's tied uh, with Brady Robertson, but he's got an asterisk by his name as he's missed uh, a few games with an injury, but good news for him is he is looking good. I see him walking around here tonight with no brace on his foot, and I'm um, here in just a few weeks away, so that's great news for the Marine Tide. Kyler King is uh, batting 429, as I said, tied for Brady, who was red hot before he went out with an injury. Landon Watts is hitting 400 for the Tide. Parker Helton's also hitting 400. Cooper Moreau is hitting 343. Jamie Lumpkin, 316. Morgan Kraft, 314. And then a couple of other Maroon Tide hitters, Braxton Carter, 250. And Justin Stockstill is hitting it uh, 217. So that's some batting statistics so far as we get ready to enter into district play. Uh, how about some pitching statistics, you say? Well, I just happen to have those here also. Tanner Busby leads the Tide in uh, innings pitched. He's pitched in six games. He has a record of... Let's see, three and one, and his ERA is 1.80, so a pretty phenomenal start for Mr. Busby. Is um, he probably looks to start either Friday or Saturday night, depending on how things play out 
uh, this weekend with rain, and we've got some other things going on. So we'll see how that plays out. Expect him to pitch one of those games this weekend. He pitched on Saturday, and so uh, not really expected to enter the lineup tonight. Kyler King has um, a 3.58 ERA. He is thrown in 13.2 innings, and he has a win-loss record of 1-1. One and one. Landon Watts has appeared in five games. He posts a record of 1-1, one and one, and his ER, ERA is .61. He also has struck out uh, 15. Busby has struck out 41, and uh, Kyler King has struck out 10 so far on the season. So there's just a few statistics as we get going here. From a fielding perspective as a team, the fielding percentage is 949. They've committed 15 errors on the season, turned two double plays and uh, no triple plays so far. So there's some statistics for the Maroon Tide as we are, the umpires are now visiting with the coaches at home plate, getting ready to get this one underway. So we'll be back here. Probably in just a minute as they get ready to announce the players and also play the anthem. And we'll be ready for baseball here as we get going with the district season. Maroon Tide will will start this one zero and zero. That is the district schedule as we're getting ready to start playing for real on the Pawpaws Campers and Cars pregame show. Pearl River Community College has been providing a quality education to the people of South Mississippi and beyond for the past 110 years. If you or a family member is an alumnus of this great institution, we invite you to support future PRCC students through the PRCC Foundation Scholarship Program. Honor or memorialize a loved one or identify your support for the college by creating a scholarship through the PRCC Foundation with your tax-deductible financial gift. Call Delana Harris with the PRCC Foundation office at 601 401-1191 403-1191 and make a financial investment in a young person's future at Pearl River Community College. Hey neighbors, it's that time of year again. It's springtime. Make that short drive to Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's has a nice selection of new and used trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Please go to our website, pawpawsniceprice.com and see multiple pictures of our entire inventory. Pawpaws Campers having fun, selling fun. That's a good RV, Tommy Upton back here at Richie Tillman Field on the campus of Pasigula High School as the Maroon Tide players are being announced now. And uh, we'll have the announcement of the Pasigula players and then the playing of the anthem and we'll get underway here. A uh, eventful week for the Tide as they uh, had had a not so lackluster or, or a lackluster, I should say, week last week. They dropped a decision down in Biloxi to Tupelo. Uh, sort of a lackluster performance. Made a couple of errors. Just seemed to to struggle down the stretch, and then uh, ran into a pretty good team, Purvis, on Saturday. Got rained out from playing at MGM Park on Friday night as they would have uh, taken a, taken on a team out of Dallas, I believe. And uh, that game got rained out, so I know the kids were disappointed in that. And then just a not not very good performance on Saturday against Purvis, and Purvis is the defending state champion in their classification. So they're a pretty good ball club, not taking anything away from them. But they're looking to rebound tonight as we get district play underway. Uh, as I said, let me go ahead and give you the uh, lineup one more time. If you just join it, Parker Helton will – Lead off play center field. Kyler King will play shortstop. Morgan Kraft will play first base. Cooper Moreau will be on the mound and bat fourth. Landon Franklin will be the DH tonight. He'll be hitting for Mason Bayless, who will be catching for the tide. Braxton Carter will be at third base. Uh, Mr. Pugh will be in right field. Brunson Stockstall will be at second base. And Justin Stockstall will be in left field for the tide. So let me get you the national anthem here. And we'll be getting ready to play baseball. You're listening to Picky and Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW.
Well, the players have been announced. The anthems have been played. The umpires are in position. Pasagula has taken the field, and we're going to get ready to get this one underway. You've been listening to the Pawpaws, Campers, and Cars pregame show on WRJW. Hey, neighbors, it's that time of year again. It's springtime. Make that short drive to Pawpaws, Campers, and Picayune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaws has a nice selection of new and used trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Please go to our website, pawpawsniceprice.com, and see multiple pictures of our entire inventory. Pawpaws Campers, having fun, selling fun. Welcome to the river, where education meets excellence. Join the Wildcat family and dive into our lively campus. Make friends, join clubs, get involved, and create memories. Experience academic excellence with our dedicated faculty. Explore cutting edge facilities designed for your success. Choose PRCC for an education that shapes your future. Pearl River, where you can roar with champions. Tommy Upton back here with you as we're just about to get underway. Pitcher has his final warm-up toss for Pasagola pitching for them. Let's see if I have a name here, and I do. Terry Lee will be pitching right-hander for Pasagola. We'll let you know that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. So we're getting ready to get district play underway here. Parker Helton's going to lead it off, left-handed hitting Outfielder for the Tide, been playing center field for most of the year. He'll lead it, lead it off for the Tide against Mr. Terry Lee from Pascagoula. So he steps in, and we're underway here at Richie Tillman Field. Here's the first pitch from Lee to Helton. It's going to be a fastball down low for a ball. Pretty good crowd uh, from Pascagoula and both Picune. Picune crowd setting kind of behind me and to my left off the, in the third base dugout. That pitch is going to be hit hard on down the left field line, and that's going to get past the shortstop, past the first baseman. So Helton will take a fastball, and he will just slap it out into left field for a single. And that's how the maroon title gets started here. Good job of hitting there by Helton as he drives a pitch in the 5-6 hole. And he'll stand it first here. Kyler King will step into the box. Kyler leads in just about every offensive category for the Maroon Tide. Right-handed hitting shortstop. He'll take the first pitch up high for a ball. 1-0 to King. Just underway. Richie Tillman Field here in Pascagoula. There's a fastball right down the middle for a strike. So 1-1 to King. King to PRCC commit. Play baseball next year for the Wildcats. Here's a 1-1. Helton's going to go on the pitch. King is going to hit this ball hard down the left field line. It is going to get off the bottom of the wall. Helton's going to come into third. He'll slide in with a first-to-third move, and King will stand at second with a stand-up double as that ball bounced off the bottom of the wall, and the Tide is in business here with a single followed by a double, and we've got runners at first and third with nobody out. That'll bring to the plate Morgan Kraft. Kraft, a two-sport commit to Pearl River Community College. He'll be the Vying for the uh, place kicking job and also on the baseball team. So he steps in, the big first baseman. Helton's at third, King's at second. As they both hit balls hard. King off the bottom of the wall, Helton into left field for a single. Here's the first pitch to Kraft. He's going to bounce that one at Coach Nicholson down at, in the third base box. He gives a half-hearted effort. I'll give him a four on that. But it is cold, so I can't really hold that against him. I don't know if I'd have stuck my hand out either. So 0-1 to Kraft. Breaking ball is going to stay outside for a ball. 1-1. So 
Nobody out. Runners at second and third. Top of the first. Tied got some business cooking here. 1-1 one, one to Kraft. That fastball is going to stay up high. 2-1. Just underway on a beautiful spring night. A little chilly, but not much wind. Nice crowd. Here's the 2-1. Kraft's going to hit that one off the end of the bat. It's going to get past the shortstop. It's going to pass the third baseman. It's going to – the, the shortstop is going to throw that into to home. So as Helton started to come down the line, he's jammed on brakes as a shortstop was able to get it, throw to home. King ended up standing on third. He had to retreat back to second when Helton could not score on the ball hit not very hard. So that'll be a fielder's choice. Well, I guess we're going to have to give that an infield single because nobody actually got out. So be a squibber to the shortstop. The end result's going to be bases loaded, and that's going to bring to the plate Cooper Moreau, the pitcher. So he'll stand in here with nobody out. Base is full of Tiesman, and he'll take the first one and put it into the dugout of Pasagola for a foul ball strike. So 0-1 to Coop. Yeah, a little weird play. Got past the third baseman who was in. Not Ball not hit hard. Got to the shortstop. He was able to keep Helton from scoring. and Helton was about halfway down. Had to retreat. King had to retreat, but everybody got back safely. 0-1 pitch is going to be outside to Coop. It'll be 1-1. Bases full of Tiesman, nobody out. 1-1 one, one to Coop, top of the first, no score. Coop's going to hit that one hard, but it's going to get foul down the right field line. So he was all over it. He got a fastball up about letter high, turned on it, but just pulled it foul. So the count will go 1-2 here. Craft at first, King at second. Parker Helton is at third. Here's a 1-2. That one's going to be lifted into shallow left field. I don't know if it's going to be deep enough. And he's going to actually get out of play. So no play over there. Ball just kept drifting. So the count will remain. 1-2 to Coop. Left-handed hitting third baseman. and Tonight will be pitching for the tie. Here's the 1-2. That's going to be down for a ball 2-2. Two, two. So 2-2 two, two to Coop. Nobody out. Base is full. That one's going to stay up high for a ball. 3-2. So got down 1-2. Battle back here on some balls that were not really close. It's a running count to 3-2. Here's a payoff pitch to Moreau. That one's going to be right in there for a called strike three. So Coop goes down on strikes. That'll bring up Landon Franklin, a designated hitter for the Tide, as he'll hit with one out. Base is still loaded. Top of the first here. Tide got some traffic, needs to, uh, needs to capitalize here. Base is loaded and nobody out. Now one out. Landon's going to lift that one into left field. I think it's going to stay in play. And no, it's actually going to drift just out of play, too. So the ball drifting over in left field. A lot of foul territory, but that one actually just snuck out of the fence. Both the third baseman, shortstop, and the left fielder gave chase, but nobody could get to it. So 0-1 to Franklin here. Here's a pitch from Lee. Uh, breaking pitch is going to stay outside and low for a ball. 1-1 one, one to Lee. From Lee, I'm sorry, to Franklin. Here's a 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss from Franklin. Got a breaking pitch that stayed low. Swung over the top. So he'll go 1-2 here. Still one out, still bases loaded. Tide looking to do anything here. Just get a ball in play by Franklin. 
You feel that if it's anywhere but the pitcher, you can probably score a run. That one's going to be hit at the third baseman. Third baseman's going to go home. They've got one. They go to first. They throw it away at first. It kicks out into foul territory. So that will allow King to score from second. And so that's going to be a fielder's choice to the third baseman. He's going to throw home, get the force out. Tide will score one on the on the air by the, the uh, catcher as he overthrows the first baseman. It allows King to come from second. So Kraft will go to third. We'll have a runner at first. It's Franklin. Now Carter will step in, third baseman for the Tide. That one's first pitch to Carter is going to be a strike. So 0 1 to Braxton. Tied plates one here. Got two outs now. Need a hit to score another one or a pass ball. That one's going to be down in the dirt. Good job there by the Pascagoula catcher as he blocked it. A lot of foul territory here. They do have a brick wall or cinder block wall at the bottom, so the ball can kick around, but lots of foul territory here behind the plate. Plenty of opportunity for picking to score if they get a pass ball. So 1-1 one, one here to Carter. Turner Pugh stands on deck for the tie. That one's going to be hit over the head of the third baseman. It's going to stay fair. Kraft will score. And Franklin's going to get into third. I thought they were going to call him out, but he legs a first to third move there as he gets into third base. Carter's going to get into second on the throw. So Picking plates another run on the single there by Carter. Franklin was a bang-bang throw at third, but he's able to slide in there. So that'll be two runs for the Tide here as they score. Runners on second and third. And that's going to bring to the plate Turner Pugh, right fielder for the Tide, as he'll hit two guys on, two out here. Tide scored two so far here in the top of the first on three hits. That pitch is going to be outside to Pugh, ball one. A couple of hits, a throw in air. Tied have been in business so far here. Lots of traffic. See if they can keep it going here with the bottom of the order. Here's a 1-0 to Pugh. He's going to stay up high for a ball, ball two. That's going to draw a visit from the catcher, Jared Loper. He's going to run out and talk to Terry Lee, his pitcher. Also give the bat boy an opportunity to refill the ball bag of the umpire. Brunson Stockstill stands in the on-deck circle for the Tide. Carter's at second. Franklin's at third. Pew's up 2-0 count to him. Here's the pitch. That one's going to stay up for a ball, ball three. So 3-0 to Pew. Lee not throwing uh, very hard and breaking pitch. Doesn't seem to have a great deal of movement on it. That's one right down the middle. That's the 3-0 strike there. So 3-1 to Pew now. See if he can get another fastball here. Just something to the right side. Big hole on that right side for Pascagoula. That one's going to stay inside for a ball. So that'll load the bases back up here for Brunson Stockstill. The lanky basketball playing second baseman will step into the box. See if he can do something here with Terry Lee. Base is loaded. Two outs for the tie. They've played it two so far. First pitch is going to be up high to Brunson for a ball. one to Brunson. That one's going to be right down the middle for a strike. 1-1. One, one. Brunson looks at a, at a good all-speed pitch. Just underway here. Pass a goal. They're tied on top. 2-0 on three hits. Bases loaded. Brunson stocks still hitting. He's going to swing and mitt at a breaking pitch, but the ball does not kick far enough away from the catcher to allow Franklin to score from third. He thought about it, but just didn't kick quite enough away from the catcher, Loper. So he'll retreat back to third. 
She's at first. Carter's at second. Franklin's at third. Here's a pitch to Stockstall. That's going to be outside. Run the count 2-2 to Brunson. Tide looking to put some distance between them and the Panthers here early. So they've scored two. Here's a pitch. Brunson's going to chop that one to third. It's going to stay foul. So the count will remain 2-2 to Brunson. Hey, if you're listening, let me know. 601-590-5950. 601-590-5950. Let me know that you're listening in. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Brunson. Swing and a miss. So Brunson goes down on strikes. That will end the half inning, but not before Picayune scores two on three hits. And an error. We head to the bottom of the first. Picayune two, Pascagoula coming up. Tackle your pain with Dodd Therapy Center. Jamison Dodd, a former Maroon Tiesman, and his team of therapists provide one-on-one specialized care to help you and your athlete get back in the game. Dodd Therapy Center offers specialized post-operative care, manual spine techniques, trigger point dry needling, and spinal decompression traction for neck and back pain. Jamison is also specialized in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dot Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. Hey friends, camping's a spring thing, and spring is here. Check out this new 2024 Wildwood FSX 174BH. This travel trailer has a front queen bed, rear bunks, and only weighs 2,899 pounds. MSRP is 24,398, reduced to only 13,988. A brand new 2024 bunkhouse trailer for only 13,988. Off Walls Campers is not that far from where you are. Come and see us. Tommy Upton back here with you at Richie Tillman Field on the campus of Pasagola as Picayune scores two in the top of the first to take a 2-0 early lead. Cooper Moreau finishing up his warm-up pitches as he gets ready to face 1-2-3 for Pasagola. Let you know that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, or their Picayune Maroon Tide Proud. Stop by the main branch at 121 East Canal for all your banking needs. Jared Loper, the catcher. Uh, Adrian Rosado, the third baseman. Griffin Wells, the shortstop, will be 1-2-3 for Pascagoula as we get underway here. Forgive me if I if I uh, mess up some of those names. I am trying to read uh, Timmy's handwriting here as he was helping me out getting set up. So forgive me if you know some of these guys and I mess them up. Not intentional. Todd scored two, as I said, just underway here in the first. And... Uh, did so on a couple of hard hit balls. And um, now Cooper Moreau will face one, two, three. Got several folks listening in. Hey, Tyler, I see you and old Pappy listening in. Glad that uh, y'all are listening in from Hoopo. Jeff Stockstall said he is listening in from the Eastern Store. Corey Dorn listening in says roll tide. Hey, guys, thanks for chiming in here. Here's Jared Lober, the catcher for the tide, Cooper Moreau. Delivers the first pitch here in the bottom of the first. It's going to be a foul ball. First pitch to Loper. So 0 1 quickly. A couple other people said listening, but I don't have your number, so I don't know who you are. I would say your name, sorry. Here's the 0 1. That's going to stay down for a ball. 1 1. Here's the 1-1 one, one to the catcher. That's going to be on the outside part of the plate for a strike. 1-2 so here to the catcher. James and Pam Hopgood. So listen in. Hey, guys, that one's going to bounce for a ball. Ball 2-1. Two, two, Tied leading early here. If you're just joining in, bottom of the first. They're up 2 nothing. Leadoff hitter in the bottom of the first. 2-2 two, two count for Pascagoula. Breaking pitch, strike three. Nice one by Moreau as he breaks a 12-6 breaking ball off. Falls off the table and strikes out the catcher. It's going to bring up the third baseman for Pascagoula, Adrian Rosado. So Rosado will step in here with one out. Tanya, listen in. Hey, Tanya. 
That's going to be lifted into short center field. Brunson's going back. He will step under that and retire the second out of the inning. That ball is lifted. Just not very far. So quickly here we got two outs for Cooper, and that's going to bring up the shortstop, Griffin Wells, for Pascagoula. There's a pitch from Cooper. He's going to hit that one on the ground to King. King's going to scoop it, make the throw across the diamond. Kraft is going to pick it, and that's going to end it. One, two, three, go Pascagoula. We head to the bottom of the first, picking it on top, two to nothing. Hey, neighbors, it's that time of year again. It's springtime. Make that short drive to Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's has a nice selection of new and used trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Please go to our website, pawpawsniceprice.com, and see multiple pictures of our entire inventory. Pawpaw's Campers, having fun, selling fun. Dr. Hermaine Almonte, Chair of Surgery and Trauma Medical Director, Highland Community Hospital. Over the last 10 years, the Highland Surgery Department have grown exponentially. We have been able to add multiple services to our surgery department, which includes urology, general surgery, advanced laparoscopic surgery, ENT, as well as ophthalmology. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. For more information, go to highlandch.com. Welcome back to Maroon Tide Baseball. Tommy Upton here on the campus of Pasigola High School at Richie Tillman Field. Tide leads this one 2 to nothing, heading into the top of the first, second inning. Let you know that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, the place for all your banking needs. Ms. Susan Wilson and her staff are ready to serve you at their North Picayune branch on Cooper Road. Just off of exit 6, go by and see Ms. Susan for a loan. Justin Stockstall is going to lead this one off, number 9 hitter for the Tide. Left-handed hitted left fielder will step in here against Terry Lee. First pitch is going to be on the outside part of the plate for a strike. 0-1 to Stockstall. Here's the 0-1. That one's going to be down for a ball. 1-1 to Justin. One one. That one's going to stay up high for a ball. Two one. Stock still trying to lead off. Turn the the lineup over. He'll hand it back to Parker Helton. Hopefully by standing on one of the backs. Here's the one one down for a ball. Sorry, the two one down for a ball. So three one. To Justin here. Lee not throwing extremely hard. Got a breaking pitch, but it looks like it's it's breaking mostly. Horizontal, not a lot of down break. I'm, I'm hoping the tide can keep barreling it up. That one's going to stay outside to Justin, so he will turn the lineup over to Parker, and he'll stand it first. Hilton got this game started last inning with a hard hit ball in the five-six hole out into left field. So he'll step in here one for one. He'll hit with nobody out, and Justin stocks with it first. Here's the first pitch to Hilton. That one's going to be down low for a ball. And that's going to draw a visit by the Pasigola head coach. So he'll come out and have a conversation with Mr. Lee. And as we do, we're going to step away and play a word from our sponsor. We'll be right back after this message. Welcome to the river where education meets excellence. Join the Wildcat family and dive into our lively campus. Make friends, join clubs, get involved, and create memories. Experience academic excellence with our dedicated faculty. Explore cutting-edge facilities designed for your success. Choose PRCC for an education that shapes your future. Pearl River, where you can roar with champions. So back here in the top of the first, got runners at first. Nobody out. Parker Helton's going to lead this one off. Did uh, draw a visit by the Pasigola head coach. He comes out to have a conversation with his right-hander. 
1-0 count to Parker. He steps back in. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be fouled off. Good cut there by Parker as he was right on it. Fouled it straight back to even the count at 1-1. Connor King stands in the on-deck circle for Picayune. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Helton. That's going to be a breaking pitch hit down the line to right, but it is going to get fouled, so that'll run the count to 1-2 to Petey. Parker has been just an outstanding defensive center fielder over the last couple of years for the Tide and really has turned into a scrappy hitter tonight, hitting from the leadoff spot. Here's a 1-2. That's going to be down for a ball, 2-2. Two, two. Maybe a little bit different lineup than what you're used to if you're a Maroon Tide regular. Had a few, few uh, players out tonight. A little bit different lineup than maybe what you hear. Give some some folks a chance to play. Here's the 1-2 to Helton. He's going to foul that one off. Count remain 2-2. Here's the pitch to Helton. Justin Stockstall's at first. Helton's going to lift that one into foul territory down the third baseline. It's going to get foul. Nobody can get there. So still 2-2. Umpire's going to get another refill as the tied batsmen have fouled off quite a few early here in the first inning plus. So we'll do it again, 2-2 to Helton. That one's going to be hit on the ground between first and second. The second baseman cannot get there. So Justin Stockstall will make a big turn at second, but he wisely comes back into second base. So Helton is two for two tonight as he drives a ball past a shaded second baseman. He was shaded over in case he needed to go to second base on a throw. And he's, Helton slaps one into the four hole. And so Petey is on fire tonight as he stands on first now. Runners at first and second. Kyler King will step in here. Tied on top. 2 nothing so far, and they're threatening again with nobody out here in the top of the second. Morgan Kraft is on deck for the tie. Here's the first pitch to King. That one's going to be hit hard out into right field. Well, not quite as hard as I thought. It kind of flared. I thought it was hit harder off the bat, but the second baseman is going to be able to go back and catch the flare. So King will pop out to the second baseman. I thought maybe off the bat it had a chance to get down, but it just stayed in the air too long, and the second baseman was able to drift back and record the first out. So that'll ring Morgan Kraft up, first baseman for the Tide. He'll hit with steel runners at first and second and one out. He's going to hit the first pitch he sees out into right field. Right fielder's going to settle underneath this one and make the catch, and it's not deep enough to get stock still over from second base. So two pitches, two outs here for the Tide as King and Kraft both pop out. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Cooper Moreau, who struck out last time up. He'll hit here with two on and two out in the top of the second. Here's Lee's pitch. Cooper's going to hit that one high into center fielder, but I think it's going to be playable. The center fielder settles under it, and he makes the play. So three pitches and three outs with two guys on and nobody out is not the way the Tide had drew that one up, but they still head to the bottom of the second ahead to nothing. Looking for a gym to help you become a healthier you? The gym at Picayune is the place to be with its large open facility, modern equipment, and knowledgeable staff led by owner and operator Edgar Woods. The gym at Picayune offers a variety of workouts and classes to meet your specific needs with 24-7 access. The gym accepts silver sneakers, which is available at no cost for adults 65 plus through select Medicare plans. More space, more equipment, more growth. The gym at Picayune. 
First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve its local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Tommy Upton back here at Richie Tillman Field on the campus of Pasigola High School as Picayune leads this one 2 to nothing, heading into the bottom of the second inning. The first pitch of every inning, we want to remind you, is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, where they always put you first. Stop by the South Branch and see Miss Tracy Acker on Memorial Boulevard for all your banking needs. Denzel Melendez, the first baseman for Pasigola, will lead this one off. Right-hander will step in here against Cooper Moreau. One, two, three, went the Gula Panthers in the first. See if Cooper can repeat that. Here's his first pitch. He's going to stay down for a ball. A little bit of wind now starting to blow. They're really in my face, so due, due in from right field. Not much, just a little bit of a breeze. That would be mostly out of the south. That pitch is going to stay up for a ball. 2-0. That one's going to be good fastball there by Coop as he throws it by Melendez for the first strike, 2-1. That fastball is going to be called for a strike. I thought maybe it was a tad up, but we got the call and we'll take it. So 2-2 here to the big first baseman from Gula. He fouls that pitch off, so count will remain 2-2. Coop working fast, filling the zone up, which is what you want out of your starter, especially when you're staked into a leak. That one's going to be on the ground a third. Carter's going to pick it up, make the throw across the diamond, and he will record the first out of the inning. So a chopper to Carter. He makes the plate, throws a shot across the infield. Kraft does not have to dig this one out of the dirt. They retire the first out of the inning. That's going to bring the pitcher, Terry Lee, up. For Pascagoula. Here's the first pitch to Lee. That's going to be fouled off for a strike. A one. If you're listening in, you hadn't let me know. Let me know. 601 590 5950. 601 590 5950. That ball is going to stay down to Lee for a ball. 1 1. We'll have a Paul's Pastry Shop Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question here coming up in the fifth. Ball's going to stay up for a ball. Ball two. And we'll have a Sonic player of the game. Tide's first district matchup of the year. Play tonight here in Gula, Friday night at home, and Saturday back here in Gula. That ball is going to stay down for a ball. Three. Different format this year. Last year we played two game series against everyone and then played everyone in a single game at the end of the district championship, or district season, I should say. That one's going to stay low for a ball. So Coop it, uh, gives up the first walk of the game. He'll walk the pitcher, Lee. Sebastian Ford, who's the designated hitter, will hit. With Lee at first, get a courtesy runner. I'll get you his name and number here in just a second. So, yeah, three games series this year in district. Play Tuesday, Friday, Saturdays. That'll be how we play out here George County next week. In the same setup, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. Coop's going to throw over to first, and it was very close. Very close. Snap throw by Coop. But he is safe. So here's the pitch to Ford. Ford's going to swing and a miss at a fastball. So 0 1. To the designated hitter. Courtesy runner for the pitcher at first. One out. Todd leads it 2 0. Swing and a miss for 0 2. Big cuts, but nothing to show for it by the designated hitter. He looks like a defensive lineman. He is a big young man, so I hope he continues to swing and miss. 
A little bit of hesitancy by uh, Cooper on the sign, so he steps off. We'll start it all over again. Curtis and Runner with his lead down at first. One out. Breaking pitch in the dirt. Good job there by Bayless. As he blocks it up, keeps the ball in front. So one, two to Ford. One out. Infield playing straight up all the way around. It's a one two pitch. Another swing and a miss by Coop as he throws three fastballs by him. Couldn't get him to bite on a breaking pitch. But he said it doesn't really matter because I'll just throw another fastball right by you, and he does. So Sean Norville, right fielder, will step in here with two outs. Runner at first for Gula. Cooper tries to squelch this little bit of traffic. Gula has gotten on a free pass. Another throw over, and a good job there by Morgan. As that ball short hopped him, and he kept it in front. That ball could have went out into right field and been at least one, maybe two bases. But he knocks it down there. Good job by Kraft. Here's a pitch to Norville. That one's going to be hit on the ground to, to third baseman. Carter's going to pick it up, throw to Kraft, who makes another fantastic dig on a not-so-great throw, a great fielding play over there by Carter. Short hopped it into first, but Kraft dug him out, as he often does over there at first base, and the tide squelches a little bit of traffic. They head into the top of the third, leading this one two to nothing. At Sonic Drive-In of Picayune, Tuesday after 5 p.m. till close is Family Night with half-off cheeseburgers. Sonic Drive knows how hard it is sometimes to feed your whole family, and we want to give you a break on Tuesday nights. Half-price cheeseburgers. It's how Sonic Drive-In helps you feed your family. Remember that Sonic Drive-In of Picayune on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North, is happy eating at its best. Tuesday's Family Night with half-price cheeseburgers. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Picayune. We got your bag, hey. Back pains and injuries, Dr. Moore understands. No more pain, no more hurt, and she just uses her hands. She got the number one clinic that I recommend. She has a lovely crew, too, and they'll fit you right up. So call Dr. Moore when that pain gets rough. Cause we got your back, hey, we got your back. We got your back, hey, we got your back. We got your back, hey, we got your back. More Chiropractic Clinic, located at 6682 Highway 11 North. Suite 103, Carrier, Mississippi, 39426. We got your back, hey. Back here at Richie Tillman Field, where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FMB Picune. Landon Franklin steps in and hits the first pitch he sees past the shortstop out into left field, and that'll be a single for Franklin as he sees one pitch and promptly hits it out into left field for a single. Kind of rude. Wouldn't even let me finish the sponsor reading there, but I'll take it. So good job there by Franklin as that's he sees one pitch, as I said, stands on first. That brings up the third baseman, Braxton Carter. Carter will hit here. Franklin at first, nobody out. First pitch is going to be in there for a strike. So here's the 0 1 to Carter. That one's going to get past the catcher, and that's going to allow Franklin to get down to second on a wild pitch, stolen base, or wild pitch, I should say. So 1-1 one, one to Carter. And Franklin now stands at second. Todd leads this one 2 nothing on five hits and an error by Pascagoula. Carter's going to hit that one to third base. He's going to look the, the runner back at second and then throw it away at first. And that's going to allow Franklin to get to third. And it's going to allow Carter to get all the way into second. So ball was hit. It was a chopper to the third baseman. And he makes a good play. And as often happens when you have all the time in the world, you make a bad throw. And he threw it over the bag at first. 
kicks out into right field and allows Carter to get to second and Franklin to get to third. So Tide got something cooking here once again. Runners at second and third. Turner P will be up first or be up batting next, I should say. And the first pitch to him is going to be up for a ball. So 1-0. That often happens when you have all the time in the world. You make a bad throw. If it's bang-bang, you get rid of it. That one's going to be fouled off for a strike, 1-1. One, one. All right, here's a 1-1 one, one to Pew. That breaking pitch is going to stay in the dirt for a ball, 2-1. Still looking for a pass ball. That would score a run here. Lots of foul territory at Pascagoula. Good job so far by Jared Loper as he is not allowed a pass ball, at least not one that's kicked very far. Here's a 2-1. Pugh's going to hit that one to center field. I think it's going to be deep enough to tag for Franklin. There's the catch. Franklin is going to tag, and the throw is going to go into third. So no play at the plate. This pew's going to lift that one in, into center field, and that'll be enough for a sack fly. And that will score the third run for um, Picayune. And that'll bring to the plate Brunson Stockstall. Brunson will hit now with Carter still at second. So a good job of hitting there by Pew. First pitch to Stockstall is going to be down, and that one's going to get away from the catcher and goes all the way to the screen. So Carter will get to third, and 1-0 will be the count to Stockstall. 3-0, Todd leads this one in the top of the third. They've scored, they scored two in the second, none in the – that's two in the first, I should say. None in the second, although they had runners at first and second with nobody out. Three consecutive pitches, three consecutive outs as they got out of that inning. But they've scored one so far here in the third. Brunson's going to square to bunt, pull it back, and that one's going to stay outside. So ball two to Brunson. Looks like he was going to see if he could lay one down as a third baseman is having to remain close over there with a runner at third. See what he does here, 2-0. He does square again, pulls it back, and a little slash. Just couldn't quite connect. He tried to square, pull back, and slash, but fouled it off. Just couldn't get it in play. So 2-1 now to Brunson. As I said, they're up 3-0 on five hits and two errors. By Pascagoula. Here's a 2-1. That one's going to be in there for a strike. My pick United Clinic glasses said it may have been a little bit low, but the umpire has yet to turn around and ask me. If he does, I'll certainly render an opinion, but I'm close enough, but he has not asked me for one yet. We'll see if he does. Here's a 2-2. Breaking pitch is going to stay down low for a ball. 3-2. I've been to a lot of baseball games, and the umpire has not asked me for my opinion yet, even when I was coaching or playing. So I don't, know, I don't look for it to happen tonight, but I am always prepared. Here's a 3-2. Stockstall's going to swat at that one. It's going to be fouled back towards the first base dugout. Loper gives chase, but he could not get to it. And so uh, count will remain 3-2. Loper gave chase over there, and wind caught it and pulled it back a little bit and just couldn't get back to pull that one down, so... No harm, no foul for Brunson. He'll hit again here, 3-2, runner at third, one out. Terry Lee still pitching for Pascagoula. That one's going to stay down low for a ball. So ball four to Brunson. So he'll head down to first. It's going to bring Justin Stockstill to the plate. Left fielder will hit here for the Tide, and he will hit here with runners at first and third. That ball is going to be in there for a strike. Stockstill is going to go to second. There will be a throw, but it's not in time. 
So Brunson Stockstill will now head down to second, and he will be in there with a stolen base. So he'll stand at second. Carter's at third. Justin Stockstill's hitting here with an 0-1 count. It's a pitch. It's going to be up high for a ball, 1-1. Shortstop came in. There was a throw to second, and I thought they could have been close had he applied the tag, but Braxton Carter made just enough noise over here on third to draw the attention of the shortstop, and he he looked up and kind of started chasing him back and did not try to apply the tag. There's a called strike to Justin. May have been just a bit high, but the man in black says it was it was where it was supposed to be, so 1-2 to, to uh, Justin. One out here in the top of the third. Tide leads 3-0. That breaking pitch is going to stay down low. Good job there by Loper for Pascagoula to block it up. Saved a run for Pascagoula there. So he'll keep Carter and Brunson Stock still at second and third, respectively. Here's a 2-2 to Justin. Justin's going to hit that one. Down the left field line, I was looking because I thought it hit Braxton. It, I don't know how he got out of the way of the ball. That was a foul ball that I don't know how Braxton turned sideways and let it get by him, but uh, that could have been disastrous for the Tide. But it's just a foul ball, so we'll do it again at 2-2. Carter's going to foul it off. I mean, I'm sorry, Justin's going to foul it off again, so count remains 2-2. Yeah, that ball was hit sharply down the third base line. Braxton was down the line about 20 feet and he's able to just turn sideways enough that the ball gets by him. Had it hit him, of course, he's out. And maybe hurt. So good job there by Braxton of uh, evading the line drive. Here's a 2-2 to Justin. That one's going to be down low for a ball, 3-2. Three, two, one out. Runners at second and third. Tied on top. Justin's going to lift this one into center. We'll see if it's going to be deep enough. Carter's going to try it. Here's the throw. It's going to be online, and it is going to be out. Good throw there by the center fielder. Carter tries to stretch it from third, and he gets gunned down heading into home. So we'll head to the bottom of the third. Todd still on top of this one, three to nothing. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jamison Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improves movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. Hey neighbors, it's that time of year again. It's springtime. Make that short drive to Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's has a nice selection of new and used trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Please go to our website, pawpawsniceprice.com, and see multiple pictures of our entire inventory. Pawpaw's Campers, having fun, selling fun. Back here on the campus of Pasigula at Richie Tillman Field, where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune. Our hometown means the best service around with four locations to serve you in Picayune. So a hard hit ball there into center field by Justin Stockstall, but a good shot by the center fielder. That is Justin, or J.J. Trinidad, as he throws out Braxton Carter trying to score from third. So that is a fly out, throw him out, and that's how the Picayune goes down in their half of the third. And two quick balls to um, Matt Ditsworth, who will be the second baseman for Pasigula. They're going to 
to say that's a ball, too. So 3 0. And there's going to be four straight balls. So on four pitches, Ditsworth goes down to first. So the second walk of the contest issued by Moreau. The last one did not come back to haunt him. Let's see if, hope this one doesn't too. Those leadoff walks always seem to come back and haunt you. Here's the guy with the hose out in center field, J.J. Trinidad. He's going to hit here with one on. He squares to bunt. And umpire calls it a strike. I thought he pulled back, but the umpire said it was a strike anyway. So 0-1 here to Trinidad. He squares again, pulls it back. He's going to try to slash. And a swing and a miss. Quickly 0-2 to the center fielder. For Pascagoula. Here's a pitch from Moreau. That one's going to be fouled off towards the third base dugout. It will remain. 0-2 to the center fielder. Ditsworth is still at first. That ball is going to be lifted down the left field line, but it's going to get out of play. Kyler King and Justin Stocks will give chase. But that one gets over the, the uh, fence. So we'll do it again here at 02. Cooper comes set. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be called strike three for a beauty. So a couple of swings, and then Coop locks him up with a breaking pitch in the upper part of the zone. So he retires the first out of the inning. That'll flip the lineup back over to the catcher, Jared Loper. So he'll hit here with one out and one on in the bottom of the third. Pasagola trailing 3 nothing. Here's a pitch, swing and a miss by Loper. Good, break, or good fastball there by Cooper. Here's the 01. Breaking pitch in there for a called strike two. Nice job of pitching there by Cooper. Got the big catcher 02. And I know I've said big a couple times, but these these dudes are big. I'm not making it up. Here's the 02. That one's gonna stay up high for a ball. One two. Coop going to come set here. Deliver his 1-2 pitch. Breaking pitch in the dirt. Loper's going to hit it to short. Kyler's going to pick it up, throw across the diamond. The runner was in motion, so his only play was to go to first. And he does. That will advance the runner to second, but it will retire the second out of the inning. So with two outs. And a runner on second, Adrian Rosado, the third baseman, will hit for Pasagola. Here's the pitch from Cooper. That ball is going to be lifted up. Bayless is going to throw his mask off, get under it, and cannot pull it in. That's a tough play under the lights. Bayless did everything right, threw his mask out of the way, tried to get under it, but that's one of the toughest plays in, in baseball is that foul ball straight up. It usually has a big tail on it, and it gets into the lights. Bayless was all over it, just missed it. So that'll be strike one to Rosado. Here's the one from Cooper. Breaking pitch down. Mason's going to do a good job there blocking it up. Saving 90 feet. Runner at second has to stay there. So 1-1 one, one to count to Rosado. Third baseman for Pasagola. There's a pitch. That one's going to be lifted out into first base. Kraft's going to step underneath it, make the third out of the inning. So, so once again, Pasagola's able to get one on, but they can't do much with it as a tied 
Puts them down. One, two, three. After that, we head to the top of the fourth. Todd's still leading this one. Three to nothing. Abby Turnage, lead mammography technologist, Highland Community Hospital. Mammograms are important because they help us do early detection. A mammogram is never going to keep you from getting breast cancer, but early detection is what is going to make you have your best possible outcome. We want you to get your mammogram as early as possible, and you should have those yearly beginning at age 40. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. Looking for a gym to help you become a healthier you? The gym at Picayune is the place to be with its large open facility, modern equipment, and knowledgeable staff led by owner and operator Edgar Woods. The gym at Picayune offers a variety of workouts and classes to meet your specific needs with 24-7 access. The gym accepts silver sneakers, which is available at no cost for adults 65 plus through select Medicare plans. More space, more equipment, more growth. The gym at Picayune. You're listening to WRJW, 1320 AM, 106.9 FM, and on the portal. And you can also catch us on our YouTube channel. That's at PMHS, PMHS Sports. We are here tonight as Picayune is leading this district contest 3 to nothing, heading into the top of the fourth. I want to remind you that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, checking savings loans mortgages. If you need it, they've got it. FNB Picayune, your hometown bank, leading off the fourth. Is going to be Parker Helton, center fielder for the Tide. Terry Lee still hitting or still pitching for Pascagoula. Parker is two for two so far as he tries to bunt that pitch down low. Can't quite get to it, so he'll go in a hole 0 1 here to the center field leadoff. That one's going to stay low for a ball 1 1. On your next inning, we'll have the Paul's Pastry Shop, Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question. Uh, that one's going to stay outside for a ball, 2 1. And we'll also have a Sonic player of the game at the conclusion. 2 1 to Petey. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be right down the middle for a called strike 2 2. To the left-handed hitting center fielder. Kyler King stands in the on-deck circle for the Tide. Here's the pitch. Petey's going to swat that one on a line, but right at the shortstop, he didn't have to move. So for the first time this game, Petey goes down. Parker Helton goes down on a line drive to the shortstop. So he'll go two for three. That'll bring up King. King crack. King, Kraft, and Cooper all popped out last inning after getting three runners on, or two innings ago, I should say. Two guys on, nobody out. Todd couldn't capitalize that inning. That first pitch is going to be in there for a strike to King 0-1. King's going to tomahawk one up around his eyes out into left center field, and what a play out there by the left fielder. He had a long way to go. And a short time to get there, but he got there in the gap as King got one up around his eyes and just tomahawked it. Probably would have hit off the wall, but a good job there by the left fielder. That's Willie Sones as he makes a long run into the power alley and takes away a double from King. So that will bring up Kraft now as he hits with nobody on and two outs. Kraft's going to take a fastball outside for ball one. Yeah, that was that was extra bases, maybe three if it happened to kick off the wall in, in a certain direction, but certainly two. King was all over it. Just good job out there by the left fielder. That's ball two to Kraft now. So he takes a breaking pitch down low. Morgan's going to take another ball in the dirt, 3-0. So 3-0 on three balls, not really close. Kraft's going to walk down and have a conversation with the Tide skipper after that ball kicked up and hit the catcher. So the catcher's going to walk out and have a conversation with the pitcher, and I think that's nothing 
nothing more than uh, giving a catcher an opportunity to maybe catch his breath. I think that ball caught him where he didn't have any uh, protection. So he takes a second. Now the Pasigula coach comes out. He's going to talk to the catcher, make sure he's okay. He seems to be okay. Umpire has come in from third base. So Everybody comes in. Everybody seems to be okay. Kraft's going to step back in the box. Coach is going to return to the first base dugout. The umpire is going to head back down to third. Terry's going to step back on the pitch and then throw one into the buttocks of Morgan. So that's a tough way to get the fourth ball on the left cheek. But Morgan will take it as he uh, trots down to first base. With a hit by pitch, and that's going to bring up Cooper Moreau, the pitcher for the tide, as he'll hit now with Kraft at first and two outs. Tide lead this one in the top of the fourth here, three nothing. They've done so on five hits and two errors, and a couple of walks. So if they can add to the lead here by Coop. Hit the ball hard last inning, just didn't quite get all of it. Here's the pitch. Coop's going to hit that one hard out into center, but I believe it's going to stay in the park, and it will. Center fielder will back up, get underneath it, so the Tide go fairly quietly here other than one hit by pitch in the fourth. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Tide still leading three to nothing. Highland Community Hospital continues to do what is best for patients in our new wound healing center. Now open and staffed by a specialized team of doctors, nurses, and techs, we treat diabetic patients and others with serious wounds that have resisted traditional treatment and need special care. Located on the first floor in our outpatient department, our medical professionals will tailor a treatment plan to meet your specific needs, working to treat the whole person and not just the wound. For more information, visit www.highlandch.org. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve its local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. We're headed to the bottom of the fourth here at Richie Tillman Field, campus of Pasagola. Picking leads this one three to nothing. I want to remind you that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FMB Picking. You can come by the main branch and see the Sheila Cooper and Linda Penton. Hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. Cooper Moreau will trot back out to the mound for Picking as he's done a pretty good job so far. Just two base on balls. Other than that, he's been pretty flawless. Griffin Wells, a short top, will lead off for Pasagula. We will have a Paul Spacer shot Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question next inning. First pitch from Coop's going to be down low for a ball. Tide scored two in the first. Had some traffic in the second. Couldn't do anything with it. Scored another one in the third. Wells is going to hit that one hard out into left field, and that's going to get out of here. I thought it had a chance, or I thought Justin had a chance when it came off the bat, but not a very tall fence out there. Didn't look to be extremely uh, hard hit, but it got out of here. Nonetheless, it's going to be the first hit and the first run for Pasagula. It's a shortstop, turned on a fastball, and deposited it over the head and over the fence, or over the head of Justin Stockson and over the fence out into left field. So... Fastball just a little bit got too much of the plate. Griffin Wells deposited that one out into the parking lot. That'll bring up first baseman Daniel Melendez. He swings and miss at the first pitch he sees. 0-1. That one's going to stay down low for a ball. 1-1. Yeah, it didn't look, look fairly benign off the bat, but just kept traveling. And got out of here. 
I pick you not clinic glass. I said that was a strike, but again, he has not looked at me one time. I'm giving him all the telepathic signals that I can, but 2-1. Now 3-1. That one wasn't close. First hit, first base runner, first score for Pasagula. And that's going to be ball four to the first baseman as he'll trot down and lead. That'll bring up the pitcher, Terry Lee. See he'll hit here. Nobody out and one runner on. See if Cooper can work out of a little bit of a jam here. Lee's going to square and pull back, but the ball is still called a strike. So 0 1 here to Lee. It's a pitch from Cooper. Breaking pitch in there for a called strike. That was a beauty. 0 2. Here's the 0-2 to the Gula pitcher, Lee. Another beautiful breaking pitch. Lee tried to swat at it, but there wasn't much he could do with that one. As Cooper dropped two on him. That'll bring up the designated hitter, Sebastian Ford. This is the guy that I would not want mad at me or chasing me. He is a big dude. And he takes big cuts. That one he watches, though. A one. Here's the pitch to the designated hitter. Swing and a miss. Oh, two. Coop has elevated him both times he's come to the plate and had some success. Let's see what he does here. Oh, two. If he throws another fastball high or tries to get him to go fishing for a breaking pitch. Shakes off the first sign, gets the second. Come set. Here's the pitch. It is an elevated fastball, but Ford does not go chasing. So we'll do it again here at 1-2. That's a breaking pitch that looks beautiful from here. Skipper for Picayune is pouncing or pacing, I should say, over there in the third base dugout. He wanted it. Marin Tide Faithful wanted it. The umpire says, no, sir, it was not there. So 2-2. Two, two. That one's not close. 3-2. Fast ball's up. So here's a money pitch to four. Really don't want to put him on. Already got a runner at first with one out. Pasagula goes big fly to start the inning off. Score their first run, and that is strike three. Beautiful fastball on the outside part of the plate. Good pitch there by Cooper. Tried to get him to chase on a couple pitches outside of the zone and decides just to come back and seal the deal, and he does on a nice breaking pitch. So with two outs, Sean Norville hit now the right fielder. Lee's still down at first. I'm sorry, Melendez is still down at first. That's a called strike to Norville. Oh, one quickly to the right fielder. Coop comes set. Here's the pitch. Breaking pitch. He goes fishing. 0-2. Runner's going to go. Bayless is going to make a throw, but it's not a good throw. It gets over the second baseman's head, Brunson, but good job there by Parker as he backs up the center field. So the runner is not able to go to third. So he gets second on a stolen base, but it's 0-2. Let's make one pitch here, and it doesn't matter. We'll get out of here. Cooper comes set. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be a dribbler. It's going to might be trouble to the pitcher. Cooper's going to pick it up, make the throw across the diamond, and he throws him out. Cooper had to come off the mound. He falls to his left. He had to come off his mound to third base, backhands the ball, and then has to make a quick throw across his body, and it's a bang-bang play at first, but he gets the out. Tied heads to the top of the fifth. Although the big fly scored one, they still lead this one three to one. We got your bag, hey. Tight up pants, get you a 
Back pains and injuries, Dr. Moore understands. No more pain, no more hurt, and she just uses her hands. She got the number one clinic that I recommend. She has a lovely crew, too, and they'll fix you right up. So call Dr. Moore when that pain gets rough. Cause we got your back, hey, we got your back. We got your back, hey, we got your back. We got your back, hey, we got your back. More Chiropractic Clinic, located at 6682 Highway 11 North. Suite 103, Carrier, Mississippi, 39426. We got your back, hey. Tommy Upton here at Richie Tillman Field on the campus of Pasigola. We head to the top of the fifth. Tide leads this one three to one on some pretty good defensive play there by the pitcher, Cooper Moreau. I want to remind you that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picking. Come by the main branch and see one of our friendly loan officers, Keith Robinson, Judy Lowry, Audrey Spears, David Levy, Christina Ladner, Amy Kirkland, Julie Jack, Julie Jackson, and Colin Thompson. Hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. Landon Franklin, the designated hitter, will take the first pitch he sees down low for a ball. 1-0 to Franklin. He hits the next pitch on a line just over the top of third base, out into left field for a single. So good job there of hitting by Franklin as he hits a bullet down the third base line, past the third baseman, into left field. So second pitch he sees, he's deposited, deposits it. Out into left field, and that's going to bring up Braxton Carter, third baseman for the Tide. So he'll hit now with a runner at first, nobody out. Six hits now for the Tide. Here's the pitch to Carter. That one's going to be called ball outside. Lead comes set. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Carter's going to hit that one hard out into left field. That's got a chance. That ball's going to keep drifting and get caught at the warning track. I thought maybe it had a chance off the bat. That one looked to be harder hit than the one by uh, Rosado. But it was warning track only. So good job by Carter. He gave it a ride all the way out to the wall but the left fielder is able to pull it in. It's just a loud out for Carter. So with one out now, that'll bring up Turner Pugh, the right fielder for Picayune as he hits with a runner at first and one out. First pitch he sees is going to stay up for a ball. Oh, so close for the tie and for Carter, but came up just a few inches short there. Here's the 1-0 pitch. That's going to be up high for a ball, 2-0. And that's going to bring a visit from the passing little coach. Now to give me time to read to you the false pastry shop Mardi Gras trivia question. You need to text your, your name and the answer, your name and the answer, to 601-590-5950. 601-590-5950. Who was the first MLB player to reach 100 career home runs? Tell me the name and the number. I'm sorry, the name and the year. Who was the first major league player to reach 100 career home runs? Give me the name and the year that he did it. 601-590-5950. Pugh's going to swing and a miss after the coach has exited the field. So it'll be 2 1 now to Pew. Franklin's still down at first. One out. Tide leads 3 to 1. The ball's going to be down in the dirt. Franklin's going to get down into second. The throw probably beat him, but the second baseman lost the ball as he tried to apply the tag. So Franklin will get in there with a stolen base on a ball that was in the dirt. So 3-1 now to Pew. Franklin's at second. Got a, got a message from Mr. Kevin Vice. Hey, Kevin, thanks for listening in. Pew's going to hit that one to third. Third baseman's going to boot it. Shortstop's going to boot it. And so that will allow Pew to get to, set to first base. So the ball was hit to the uh, third baseman. 
He kicked it over to the shortstop. The shortstop could not get the handle on it either. And so that will be a error on the third baseman. And that will allow Pew to get to first. That's going to bring to the plate Brunson Stockstall. Stockstall, the second baseman for um, Picayune, will hit here with runners at first and second with one out. I got a trivia question. Winner, man, that was too easy. And, and the guy that got it is always talking about Googleable. So I made that one too Googleable, I guess. I'll give you the answer here in just a minute. Here's the pitch to Stockstall. That one's going to be in there for a called strike. 3-1 Tide leads this one in the top of the fifth. They're threatening here with two on and one out. Tied second baseman Brunson Stockstall will hit here with an 0-1 count. That one's going to be up high for a ball, 1-1. One, one. Getting all kind of correct answers. Man. And at the up my game, that was too easy. Brunson's going to hit this one to third. Third baseman's going to pick it up, apply the tag to Stockstall coming across from second. So it'll be a five unassisted. As that ball was hit straight to the third baseman. And he didn't have to move other than just to reach out and tag. tag um, sorry, that was a pinch runner coming across into third base. And he will record the second out of the inning. That'll bring to the plate Justin Stocks. I was looking at Justin when I said he tagged him walking up to the plate. And the first pitch to Justin is going to be inside for a ball. So runner still at first and second, two outs for the tide. Still up three to one. Justin's first pitch is down low for a ball. Here's a 1-0 pitch from Lee. Swing and a miss by Stockstall. So he's out in front of a good changeup by Lee. Pascal has committed three errors so far. Tide has six run, uh, six hits and three runs. They lead this one 3-1 in the top of the fifth here. Justin's going to lift that one out into left field. I think that's going to be playable out of the left fielder, and it is. So the tie gets a little traffic. They can't do anything with it, though, as they end up leaving two stranded. As we head to the bottom of the fifth, Picking still leads this one three to one. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm thick-cut bacon sizzling on your stove. And while you were over there smearing your bagel, this little piggy went on a splatter spree. And if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, you'll be crying wee, wee, wee over this fire in your home. So get all state. Jason Pigott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pigott Agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. At Sonic Drive-In of Picayune, Tuesday after 5 p.m. till close is Family Night with half-off cheeseburgers. Sonic Drive knows how hard it is sometimes to feed your whole family, and we want to give you a break on Tuesday nights. half price cheeseburgers. It's how Sonic Drive-In helps you feed your family. Remember that Sonic Drive-In of Vicky Yoon on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North, is happy eating at its best. Tuesday's family night with half price cheeseburgers. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Vicky Yoon. We're back here at Richie Tillman Field at the campus of Pasagola. Tommy Upton here. I'm going to give you the answer. I got a couple of right answers. P. Dahl, Peyton Wells was the first correct answer. Who was the first major league player to reach 100 career home runs? That would be Mr. Harry Stovey. Mr. Stovey did that in 1890. 1890 was the first major league player to reach 100 home runs. So congratulations to Peyton. You know the drill, and you know where I'll be Friday night. Here's the first pitch. To Matt Ditsworth, and it's going to be in there for a strike. Peyton, you know the drill. I'll expect some butter crunches when I see you Friday night at the Kirk. That one's going to be up high for a ball, ball one. So, yeah, if you don't know the drill, when you win, you have to go by the radio station and get your certificate. 
And you give them that certificate at Paul's Pastry. That one's going to be down low for a ball, 2-1. And you get as many butter crunches as that $10 certificate will, will get you, and you bring those as a donation to the radio crew at the next home game. You certainly can keep them if you want, but we frown upon that. So Peyton, I'll expect you to do all that. This Friday, here's the 2-2, and that's going to be swung and missed for strike three. Mason drops the ball, so he'll have to throw it down to first for the put out. He does, so Cooper retires the first out of the inning. J.J. Trinidad, the center fielder, will be the next batter. So Harry Stovey, he gets 100 home runs in 1890. Peyton says you can't make these things Googleable. So I'm going to have to do a better job, Peyton. I'm going to have to start texting you to get me some questions. That one's going to be swung and hit hard out into right field, but Pugh is going to come in and catch it on one hop. That ball was on a rope by Trinidad out into right, and I thought maybe Pugh had a chance to get there, but luckily for the Tide, he caught it on a short hop because if it would have got by him, that would have been at least three bases for Trinidad. That's going to bring up Loper, the catcher for Pasigolas. He'll hit with one on. That breaking pitch to him is going to be down low for a ball. First pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, hometown community spirit, hometown community pride, member FDIC. Here's a 1-0 pitch from Cooper to Loper. He's going to throw over to first just to keep the runner honest over there. Loper hits here with one on and one out. His team trailing three to one. Swing and a miss on a fastball. One one's a count. One one's going to stay up high to Loper. So two one here. Tied six hits, three runs so far, two hits, one being a home run, and then that single there by Pasigul, and they've committed three errors so far. Swing and a miss by Loper. That'll run the count to 2-2. Two, two. Coop's had a good uh, good game plan for some of these big guys. He just runs a fastball up around the letters, and so far they haven't really been able to catch up to it. See what he does here, 2-2. Two, two. Breaking pitch. It's going to be hit on the ground to King. King has to wait on it. We'll throw it across the diamond and get Loper. No chance at second. As he had to wait too long for the ball to get there, so his only play was across the diamond. Morgan makes a great stretch, and they record the second out of the inning. Trinidad will go to second, so he'll stand at second with two outs. And that'll bring up Adrian Rosado to the plate. So he'll hit here with two outs. Breaking pitch is going to be in there for a called strike. 0-1 quickly to Rosado. Cooper comes set. Here's the pitch. It's going to be in there for a called strike. Good fastball on the outside part of the plate. So Rosado goes quickly 0-2. Lots of room to play here if you're Cooper. See what he decides to do. Elevates a fastball. The runner's going to go to third and throw down, but not in time. That's a hard throw from for the third for the catcher with a right-handed hitter in the box. Mason tries to reach around and makes a throw. Just can't quite, quite get the speedy uh, runner. Trinidad at third, so he'll stand at third here. One-two count. Breaking pitch is going to be hit out into center field. Helton's coming in. He will make it. And that will retire the third out of the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth. Or sorry, the top of the sixth. Todd still leads this one three to one. Tackle your pain with Dodd Therapy Center. Jamison Dodd, a former Maroon Tiesman, and his team of therapists provide one-on-one specialized care to help you and your athlete get back in the game. Dodd Therapy Center offers specialized post-operative care, manual spine techniques, trigger point dry needling, and spinal decompression traction for neck and back pain. 
Jameson is also specialized in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dot Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. Hey friends, camping's a spring thing, and spring is here. Check out this new 2024 Wildwood FSX 174BH. This travel trailer has a front queen bed, rear bunks, and only weighs 2,899 pounds. MSRP is 24,398, reduced to only 13,988. A brand new 2024 bunkhouse trailer for only 13,988. Off Lost Campers is not that far from where you are. Come and see us. We are headed to the bo- to the top of the six, Richie Tillman Field on the campus of Pasagola. Picayune leads this first district game of the season, three to one, over the Panthers. Terry Lee still pitching for Pasagola. Leading off is going to be Parker Helton, followed by Kyler King and then Morgan Kraft for the Tide. I thought in the first inning that Ty was really going to be able to get to Lee, but he settled in and. And really has uh, done a pretty good job of keeping us off balance, not throwing really hard. I would say low to mid 80s. I don't have my gun set up, so I'm just guessing here, low to mid 80s. A pretty decent breaking pitch. We've hit a few balls hard, but just hit it right at folks. So uh, we'll see what can happen here. Helton is two for three on the night. And he will lead it off for the third inning out of six. First pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, where they are Picayune Maroon Tide Proud. Stop by the main branch at 121 East Canal Street for all of your banking needs. Here's the first pitch from Lee to Helton. That one's going to be fouled directly at me. That's a goose head insurance. Foul ball. For the first strike. No wind. Temperature on the Super Doppler window watch says 51 degrees right now. Cool and crisp. That one's going to be in there for a strike. 0-2 quickly to Parker. Beautiful spring night here to get the district play underway. Parker's going to chop that one over the head of the pitcher. Second baseman's going to come up, but he'll have no play to throw out the speedy Parker. So... Hilton will record his third hit of the game. He chops one over the pitcher's mound. Second baseman came in, bobbled it, but still would have had no play if he'd have fielded that one cleanly as Parker got down the base line pretty well. So Kyler King will step in here with a runner on and nobody out. Morgan Kraft stands in in the on-deck circle. He looks at the first fastball right down the middle for a strike, 0-1. It's got a final from softball as they win 3-1 to one over West Harrison. That's going to be a call strike to King as he'll go 0-2 here. Lee comes set. Here's the pitch. King's going to hit that one on a rope out into center field. It's going to get down for a single, but it's not deep enough that Helton can get to third, so he'll have to stop at second. King got a fastball up around the letters, and once again, he tomahawked it. He got the other one out into left center field, and the left fielder made an outstanding play, take away a double from King. That one, he hit about seven foot off the ground on a rope, one hop the center fielder, and uh, he will stand it first. So Morgan Kraft will step in here with an RBI chance for the big first baseman for Picayune, he'll hit with two on, nobody out. Eight hits so far for the Tide on three runs against two hits and one run for Pascagoula. <coughs> Here's the first pitch to Kraft. That ball's going to be up high. Ball one. Yes, I saw the score come across. For the girls' softball, they get their first win of the week 
over West Harrison 3 to 1. Congratulations to Lady Ty. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Kraft. That's going to be down low. 2-0. Kraft up in a big spot here. He was big last year before he went out with a freak knee injury. He drove in a bunch of runs for the tie. This is a chance for him to add to that total this year. Here's a 2-0. That one's going to stay up high for a ball. 3-0. So we'll see if, see if he has the green light. 3-0, I would doubt not. I would think he'd be taken here, but we'll see what the picky and skipper does. Here's a 3-0. Kraft is taken all the way, and that's a strike on the outside part of the plate. So 3-1. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Cooper Moreau is on deck. That one's going to bounce 58 foot. It doesn't matter. Because that is ball four. So Cooper hit here with the bases loaded. Brand Todd Pitcher will hit here. As I said, bases loaded and nobody out. See if they can add some insurance runs here late in the game. Cooper would like to. Help himself here with a big base hit. Coach Evan is going to uh, have a conversation with umpire. Oh, he's going to bring in a uh, – I was wondering what he was doing there. He's going to bring in a courtesy runner for Morgan, and that's going to be Ben Bird. So ben Bird will come in as a courtesy runner at first for Morgan. So King's at second, Parker Helton's at third. Now Ben Bird's at first. Here's the first pitch to Cooper's in there for a strike. 0-1. Oh, Here's Lee's 0-1 oh, pitch. That one's going to stay up high for a ball, 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Big opportunity here for Coop. I know he wants to help himself and his teammate here bust this one wide open. And he takes a breaking pitch on the outside part of the plate, one-two. So two pretty good pitches. Puts Coop down one-two. See if his approach changes here now with two strikes. Put something in play. Swing and a miss. So he got fooled on a breaking pitch. Swung through. Uh, Big looping breaking pitch for the first out of the inning. So Landon Franklin, a designated hitter, will step in now with one out. Runner still on all the bases. Lee still pitching. Here's the first pitch. Landon's going to hit that one down the right field line. Get down, get down, but it's going to stay foul. That one was hooking right out of the gate. Looked like me and a three wood, but it and it did just like my three would. It started out right at the right fielder and ended up bouncing off of the fence in foul territory. So a big hooking, slicing ball results in a strike one. So here's the 0-1 to Franklin. That one's going to be down low for a ball, 1-1. Franklin has a base hit last time up. That one's going to be a breaking pitch on the inside part of the plate. One, two. So Lee has found some some weapons here late in the game, struggled early, but he's put up a lot of zeros and not crooked numbers. That one, though, is going to stay behind Franklin. Don't know how it didn't hit him. Franklin stood his ground, but that breaking pitch just never broke and actually went behind him, so two, two. Lee, is, he struggled a bit early with his control, but it's kind of dialed it in here and only giving up the one run in the fourth after the two in the first. That breaking pitch stayed inside to Landon. So here's it's full up. Basis loaded one out. Franklin fouls that one off. He got a, break, he got a fastball up. 
able to foul it off. He chokes up here and we'll do it again, 3-2. That one's going to be down low for a ball. So Franklin will get an RBI on the walk. That'll run the score to four to one as Helton comes across. Kyler's now at third. Ben Bird, the pinch runner for Morgan, is at second. And Landon Franklin is at first. Braxton Carter now, third baseman, stands in. He hit one to the wall last at bat, just a few inches from a home run. He's going to take the first pitch down low for a ball, 1-0. <clears throat> I actually thought the ball he hit had a chance to get out of here. Now that's going to draw a visit from the Pascagoula pitching coach. As he might come out and remind, hey, this is a big dude, and he hit one to the warning track. Let's be careful here with the bases loaded. And not spot them another four. Doesn't look like he's going to make a pitching change, just having a conversation. Be joined us late, tied on top here, four to one. Franklin just walked in the fourth run of the – game for the tie. They scored two in the first, one in the fourth, and now one so far here in the sixth. They've done so on eight hits. Pass a goal of one run. Two hits. One of those was a home run. The other was a single, and they've committed three errors. Pass a goal of, does not make the pitching change. And um, so Pass a goal will head back. Coach will head back to the dugout. Umpire Trotted out to break up the communion. Carter steps back in here. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Lee. Fastball is going to be outside 2-0. So I said Lee had kind of dialed it in, and since then he hasn't been able to throw a strike. He's been close, but just not dialed in here. Let's see what he does here. 2-0 to Carter. That one's going to stay low 3-0. You know Carter's got the takes on here 3-0 bases loaded one out Landon just walked in a run see what happens here to Carter 3-0 that one's right down the middle for no it's going to be out I thought it was there the umpire says no so that's ball four that's going to draw another visit from the pitching coach at Pasagula and that will mean a pitching change and while they do that, we'll hear a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Todd leads this one five to one. Allen Community Hospital continues to do what is best for patients in our new wound healing center. Now open and staffed by a specialized team of doctors, nurses, and techs, we treat diabetic patients and others with serious wounds that have resisted traditional treatment and need special care. Located on the first floor in our outpatient department, our medical professionals will tailor a treatment plan to meet your specific needs. Working to treat the whole person and not just the wound. For more information, visit www.highlandch.org. Looking for a gym to help you become a healthier you? The gym at Picayune is the place to be with its large open facility, modern equipment, and knowledgeable staff led by owner and operator Edgar Woods. The gym at Picayune offers a variety of workouts and classes to meet your specific needs with 24-7 access. The gym accepts silver sneakers, which is available at no cost for adults 65 plus through select Medicare plans. More space, more equipment, more growth. The gym at Picayune. Tommy Upton back here at Pasagola, Richie Tillman Field. Tide leads this one five to one, and they're still threatening. Bases full of Tidesman. Turner Pugh is going to step in here. We have a pitch and change. I believe it was the center fielder that they brought in. I'll get his number and validate that for you. If it is, that is JJ Trinidad, if I'm correct, but we'll uh, make sure I got that number right. He's going to come into a full blown jam here with the bases loaded, one out. Turner Pugh will hit. Tide have scored two in this inning. They've done so on walks. They've kind of blown the doors off of it here. Five to one. Miss Bourgeois listening in. Parker's mom all. She said, I'm listening in and watching the YouTube channel. We appreciate Miss Bourgeois. She followed the uh, direction so very well last year and brought us some, some, um, 
some of those uh, beautiful cookies from um, Boss Pastry Shop. So we're so thankful for Miss Bourgeois. We'll be thankful for you if you bring us some. We love them. All right, here we go. Turner Pugh is going to step in. One out. Top of the six. Tied score two so far. Base is still loaded. They're on top five to one. Here's the first pitch to Pew. That one's going to be swung and foul ball. Foul ball. 01 to Pew. Still don't have a number. I'll get you a name as soon as I can see a number for the pitcher for Pascagoula. Here's the 01. Going to be a nice breaking pitch in there for 02. Turner steps back in. Brunson Stockstill is on deck. Turner's going to hit that one on the ground to the third baseman. Third baseman's going to go across the diamond to first. He'll get that out, but that will play the run. As Pugh scores a run on Fielder's Choice. So with two outs and two on, Brunson Stockstill will now hit. Runners at second and third. Franklin's at third. Braxton Carter stands down at second. Brunson Stocks will hit here with two out. Tied lead 6 1. That ball's going to be in the dirt. Good job there by Loper to block it up. Save a run for Pasagula. Brunson looks in, looking for his first hit of the game. He's going to foul that one off over the first base dugout. Oh, one. I'm sorry, 1 1. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Brunson. That one's going to be called a ball. 2-1. I apologize. Sometimes I realize on the camera that I don't switch it back when I go to break. And so I apologize that you're looking at left field out there sometimes for nothing. That's what happens when you try to do all this stuff solo. Sometimes I don't do it very well. So hopefully you enjoyed the look out there in left field for a few pitches. Now I got you back on the batter. 3-1 two, one, one to Brunson. Second baseman takes a ball upstairs for ball four, so Picky will load it again. They do so with two outs. Justin Stockstill will hit here. The left-handed hitting left fielder will step in. Parker Helton will... Stand in the on-deck circle. The first pitch to Stocksville is down low for a ball, 1-0. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be in there for a strike, 1-1. One, one. Josh is going to hit that one to short. Shortstop's going to pick it up, throw across the diamond, and throws it away at first. So that will allow two runs to score. Franklin and Carter both score. Brunson's going to have to get back into third, and Justin's going to get into second. So on an air, that'll be a two-run air. Picayune goes up 8-1 to one here on a ball that was hit not very hard to the shortstop. Made a good play defensively, just threw the ball away at first. It kicks down the right field line and allows two runs to score. So tied up now 8-1. to one. And we'll flip the line up over once again to the center fielder, Parker Helton. So he's three for four tonight. He comes up here 0-2-2, oh, two, two, I'm sorry, two outs, two runners on. The first pitch to him is down low, 1-0. Petey having a night at the, at the bat. Hidden from the leadoff spot. And that one's going to be up high for a ball, 2 0. See if he can add to his average tonight. As I said, already three for four. Going to foul that one off. It's going to get out of play down the left field line, 2 1. Tide scored two in the first, one in the fourth, and five so far here in the sixth. They've been helped by four Pascagoula heirs and a few walks. 
Here's a 2-1. Petey's going to hit that one on a bullet out into right field. And that ball is going to get off the wall. Two runs are going to score. Petey's rounding second. And he's going to get into third with a stand-up triple. Petey absolutely hammered that ball out into the right field gap. One-hopped the wall and scored two runs. Picking blows this one open 10-1 to one on an absolute missile by Parker Helton. Kyler King will step in now for picking with Morgan Kraft on deck. Still two outs. Runner on third. King's going to take a ball outside. 1-0. Here's a 1-0 pitch to King. It's going to be lifted out into right field. That may be trouble. Second baseman goes out, cannot get it. It's going to kick off of his glove. And King wisely gets into second base. Ball was out there in no man's land between right field and second base. Kicks off of him and kicks away from the right fielder. So King will get into, um, he'll, we'll give him a single and then we'll give him an error on the, uh, well, I can't really give him an error. So I'm going to have to give him a double, I guess, as it kicked off of the, the uh, second baseman and gets all the way out into right field. So Helton scores. That'll be 11-1. to one. Morgan Kraft will step in now with still two outs and a runner on second. Tough play by the second baseman there. That one's going to kick off the mound, get all the way to the backstop. King will go to third. 1-0 count to Morgan. So eight runs here in the sixth. They've been helped by a few errors and some bases on balls. And they have blown this one open 11-1. to That ball's going to stay up high 2-0. Kevin Hitch passes, listening in, and he's also telling me the score. And, Kevin, you're two innings too late. I already announced that. Girls, the girls softball won 3-1 to over West Harrison. So that one's going to stay down low. 3-0 now to Kraft. Strike called. Morgan doesn't like the call, but stay in there and get a hit. Here's a 3-1. I know that's what he wanted to do anyway. Kyler King stands at third. Kraft hits that one deep into center field, but the ballpark is going to hold it, I believe, and it does. So mercifully, this inning comes to a close for Pascagoula, but not before picking plates eight, and they bust this one open. They lead 11 to one. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a lost bee that found my way into your car. And now that I'm in here, (laughs) good luck getting me out. I think it's gone. Wait, no, it's in my hair. And if you don't have the right auto insurance coverage, well, this could be quite a sticky situation. So get all state. Jason Pigott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pigott Agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve its local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Back here at Richie Tillman Field where the tide leads this one 11 to 1 as they just, the wheels fell off for Pascagoula in that inning. They chased Terry Lee from the game. Several hits, I think four hits in that inning if I'm, my calculations are correct. A couple of walks and a couple of errors and just got ugly for Pascagoula as they allowed eight runs to go down 11 to 1. So Picayune will head into the bottom of the six. 
the first hitter for Pasigula will be Griffin Wells. The first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FMB Picking, where hometown means the best service around with four locations in Picking to serve you. Here's the first pitch from Cooper. To Wells is going to be in there for a called strike. So 0 1 to Wells. Cooper shakes off that sign, steps off, says, I don't like either one of those. Let's go for option number three. So he'll step back on, get another sign from Bayless. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be in the dirt for a ball, 1-1. Chilly night here. It's got cool now that the sun has gone down. A little bit of a wind blowing in from the south. That one's going to stay outside, 2-1. Nice crowd from Picky. You made the trek across the state. That one's going to be fouled off 2 2. That one's going to be hit on the ground at Brunson. He tries to backhand it and it ate him up. That ball was hit hard. Coop able to, I mean, uh, Brunson's able to get a glove on it, but not much he can do. We'll see how they score that. I believe they're going to have to score it a single. That was a backhanded ball, and Brunson was able to get it. Like I said, a backhand on it. That's not much he could do. It kicks off of him, and that's going to bring to the plate Daniel Melendez, first baseman with a runner on first. That one's going to stay down low for a ball, 1-0. That one's going to be in there for a strike. 1-1 one, one now. So 1-1 one, one to Melendez. Swing and a miss. 1-2 now. Melendez is 0 for 1 on the night. That one's going to be in there for a strike. So he'll go 0 for 2 there. He doesn't really like the call and looks at the umpire, but it doesn't matter. He still has to walk back to the dugout. That'll bring up Terry Lee. He was a starting pitcher, and I believe he is in center field if I saw the numbers correctly after the Pitcher swap last inning. First pitch to him is going to be up for a ball. 1-0. Tide scored eight in the top of this inning. They stretch their lead to 10. They lead 11-1. That one's going to be swung and miss for a strike. 1-1 one one now to Lee. Cooper at 81, 82 pitches so far. Had a pretty effective game. See if he can close it out here with one out. Breaking pitches in there for a strike. One, two. Cooper's been successful landing that breaking pitch. Been mixing it up well. Not overpowering, but he's done a really good job of mixing it up and locating the fastball where he wanted it. Here's a one, two. Breaking pitch. Got Lee to chase, but he got just enough of it to foul it off. Count remains one, two. Well, he's 0 for 1 on the night. Here's the 1 2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. The runner is going to go to second. And they are going to say it's a bang bang throw at second. The Maroon Tide faithful wanted the call. We say stolen base. Wanted to strike him out, throw him out to end this game. Kyler thought he had it. It was bang, bang. The umpire was right on top of it, and he said no. And that's what matters. So, with two outs, that will bring to the plate the designated hitter. His first pitch is going to be 
up high for a ball. So 1 0 to the designated hitter. Two outs, runner at second. That's in there for a strike. 0 oh, 1. Sorry, 1 1. It's a forward. Here's the pitch. That one's going to hit him. He started to swing and it got him on uh, the finger, and the umpire is going to make him stay there because it got him on the hand. Umpire says, uh, the Pascola coach is going to say, hey, he was swinging or he wasn't swinging. And the umpire says, no, sir, he swung and he swung and got hit on the hand. And if you swing, if you are swinging and the ball hits you on the hand, your hand becomes part of the bat and it is a foul ball. The Pascagoula uh, third base coach is asking if the home plate umpire will go confer with his partners because he doesn't agree with the call. And so the umpires will get together and uh, they will see if they have any difference of opinion. Looked to be like he started to swing. And um, so this this honestly could go either way. It was not a full swing, but it was a start of a swing. Coach Evan is already three-quarters of the way out of the dugout. and um, But he doesn't have to do anything because the umpire turns around after conferring with his partners and said, no, sir, it was still a foul ball. That's what we got. So 1-1, one, one, or 1-2, one, I should say. <clears throat> Two forward. Runner at second. Todd leads this one 11 to 1. Pascola down to their final out here. And that one's going to be called strike three. So that'll do it. Pascola goes down after getting a runner to second. We'll be back here to wrap this one up for you as Todd takes it 11 to 1. Sonic Drive-Ins introduces their all-new flavor combo, the peanut butter and bacon super Sonic double cheeseburger. That's right, Sonic Drive-Ins latest flavor combo combines peanut butter and bacon and layers it between two beef patties, peanut butter, crispy bacon, grilled onions, and melty cheese on a toasted bun. Stop by today and try one for yourself at Sonic Drive-In on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Go ahead, push that red button for happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Picayune. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm thick-cut bacon sizzling on your stove. And while you were over there smearing your bagel, this little piggy went on a splatter spree. And if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, you'll be crying wee, wee, wee over this fire in your home. So get all state. Jason Pigott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pigott Agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. So the tie take this one 11 to 1. I'm going to be joined here by Timmy Kraft as he's going to come down and help me. And I'm going to put him on the air to say, Timmy, I'm just doing my closing here and, and, and got to give Sonic player the game. I got to give two. How can you not go with Parker Helton as he goes four for five, uh, really, and just had an outstanding game? at the plate and then how can you not look at Cooper as he goes the complete game six inning gives up only three hits one run one earned run which was a home run walks three and strikes out nine that's a that's a pretty good uh performance by picking in here to start district play I agree uh Parker you know typically hits nine hole had to lead off tonight I mean he was spraying the ball all over the field Tommy he hit one to left he hit one to center hit a couple to right he just, you know, he sparked the tide at the top of the lineup, but we really needed Cooper tonight. You know, when you when you got a got few guys out, your defense would have really changed. I mean, if, if Cooper would have had to come out, we would have we would have had to go with Kyler if, in a close game. Then your defense changes, you know, because you don't have Jamie to play short. Colt's still out, so it was really huge for Cooper to have a big night and keep our defense the way it was. And you know, you can't say enough about these guys. I mean. You, I know Coach Nicholson's going to say we let a lot. We left a lot of runs out there. I mean, we we had a chance early to really put this game away, but you know, you come back with that eight-run fifth inning and put it away. And you know, pa- Pascagoula 
made a few mistakes, but we kept putting pressure on them to make them make those mistakes. And it's a good win, 1-0. and What a job by Cooper Moreau. Now we can regroup, come back Friday night, try to figure out a way to win another game. And, you know, Parker's hot. You know, Kyler had a couple of good swings. You know, we got to get Mo, We got to get Mo, and we got to get Cooper going. You know, Mo and Cooper's really – they're not going yet offensively. I mean, they're doing okay, but, you know, they'll both tell you that they can be better. You know, Landon Franklin swinging it now. What a big at bat Franklin had in a tight game right there. He fouled off a bunch of tough pitches and drew a bases loaded walk that kind of gave the tie that four run lead. And you kind of felt like, okay, you know, and so up and down the lineup, man, you know, everybody tonight contributed. Turner Pugh, you know, Brunson Stockstill came in and, and, and had some good at bats. Just everybody tonight, man. It took the whole team. It took everybody. You know, we played. We flashed a little leather out there. You That's know, right. I'm, I'm on Mo a little bit, but he made some plays at first base over there, digging a couple balls out the dirt and some stretches. And you know, we we just great team win. Absolutely, can't say it much better than that. Thank you for Timmy. He was coming over to help me pick up stuff, and I handed him a a, a headphone. Said, "Hey, you need to break it down and and, and I talked for ten minutes. Do some strategery here as we close things out. But that's going to do it for the Tide as they take this." opening game of the district uh, season 11 to 1 they had a big inning as Timmy said and so I'll give you a recap here the Sonic players of the game is going to be Parker Helton he goes four for five and Cooper Moreau as he records the win here goes a complete game Uh, Peyton Wells was the Paul's Pastry Shop trivia question winner and from Richie Tillman Field final score for the final time Picky takes this one 11 to 1 We'll see you back here or back at the Kirk Friday night as Picayune will head into the second game of the series against these Pascagoula Panthers. You've been listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW, 1320 AM and 106.9 FM. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a torrential downpour. You can't see out of your windshield. And if you have the wrong car insurance, you might have to make it.